Joining me now to continue this conversation about disputed election results is Representative Mo Brooks, serving Alabama's 5th Congressional District. So, Congressman, it's a real pleasure having you on the program tonight. I know that a couple weeks ago, you said that you weren't necessarily ready to ratify Biden's victory just yet. Is that still where you stand? Uh, no, it's a little bit stronger. I am not going to vote on the House floor to accept the votes of those states that I believe have a flawed election process, and hence we have an inaccurate vote count. In my judgment, when you look at the direct evidence and the circumstantial evidence, the probability is that if you could only count lawful votes cast by eligible American citizens, then Donald Trump won the Electoral College. So then right now, for example, the Trump campaign is taking that fight to the courts uh, in several states. Uh, the big one today that people are focusing on is the recount in Wisconsin. But there's also other court battles taking place in Pennsylvania, Michigan, Arizona as well. Do you think that they're pursuing this the right way then in order to verify the results of this election? Well, certainly the Trump campaign should pursue every legal remedy they have. But please understand, under American law, the American Constitution, this is a political fight. And as such, the founders of our country, the authors of our Constitution, the authors of our federal statute have decided that the ultimate arbiter of who wins a presidential race, of whether to accept or reject electoral college votes, is Congress. It's not the courts. So we have a superior position. We are the final judge, not the United States Supreme Court, on who is the next president of the United States. And when it comes to Congress as well, when you look down the ballot, uh, Republicans had a promising uh, election. They were expected to lose seats. They ended up chipping away at the Democratic majority and setting themselves up for a better 2022, is what many people are saying. But nonetheless, they overperformed down the ballot. What do you attribute that to? Whereas in some states, for example, uh, there were successes for Republicans. But then at the top of the ticket, it said that President Trump didn't have that same type of support. Are you buying that? On a public policy level, the Socialist Democrats are clearly wrong. Americans believe in liberty and freedom. The antithesis of liberty and freedom is socialism, where more power is granted to the government, where bureaucrats are given the authority to tell you, the American citizenry, on a daily basis what you can and cannot do with your lives. That's not what we believe in as a country, and it's what, not what has made us the greatest nation in world history. Then you've got the issue of border security. You've got this election fraud issue. Uh, quite clearly, the Democrats have a long history of passing laws that make it easier to engage in voter fraud and election theft. And the voters are starting to see that there are distinct public policy differences. They're having to decide which side of the fence they're on. And quite frankly, they're on our side. And I can't wait for the 2022 elections. And in order for the 2022 elections, I feel like, to have any integrity whatsoever, there needs to be some action taken when it comes to reforming our voting system at all. Uh, I mentioned a poll earlier in this program where 70 percent of Republicans don't have faith in our election system. And that is problematic from an American standpoint, no matter where you stand politically. So do you think that Republicans do have some leverage one way or the other in order to try to get some reforms through before 2022? America's election system is badly, badly flawed. Now, I've been a victim, a target of election theft before. Fortunately, we won despite the Democrats having rigged 25 percent of the voting machines to register the votes for everybody on the ballot except for Mo Brooks. Hmm. That's, pretty, that's pretty brazen. That's pretty bad. But the things, the changes that we have to make, unfortunately, are being opposed by the Socialist Democrats because they, have, they benefit from this voter fraud and election theft. And I can go down the list. I don't know how, how much time you have. Uh, by way of example, example uh, photo identification of voters when they go to the booth to make sure that the person is who they claim they are. Or how about the 1993 National Voter Registration Act, where we Americans, we want American citizens voting in our election and nobody else, right? I mean, that should be a given. Well, the Democrats made it illegal in that 1993 legislation for our voter registrars to seek proof that someone is in fact an American citizen when they register to vote, thereby opening up the door to illegal aliens and lawful immigrants, both of whom are not American citizens, to register to vote because the Democrats in 1993, when they controlled the House, controlled the Senate, controlled the White House, they were able to push through legislation opposed by Republicans. We were outgunned and outnumbered, so it passed. And that legislation makes it much easier for Democrats to steal elections, to engage in voter fraud, through the assistance 
of non-American citizens. That's wrong. And Congressman, before we let you go, too, because I think it's very important looking ahead to what's happening in Georgia, there's a possibility that Democrats could control the White House, the Senate, and the House of Representatives if they were to get their way all of the way around and, of course, win Georgia. Do you fear that those elections won't be fair either? Oh, I don't think there's any question, but that the election results that are being reported in Georgia are inaccurate, that they do not reflect the will of the majority of American citizens who have lawfully cast votes in this election. Now, the question is, really, how far off are they? That's the unknown question that we don't have an answer for. And so we'll have to see how all this plays out. But I personally am persuaded, and I'm going to reiterate this, that if we had the sword of Damocles coming down or a magic wand or something of that nature that could clearly discern and state who won this election, when you only count lawful votes cast by American citizens who are eligible to vote, in my judgment, Donald Trump is the winner of the Electoral College. I don't know if that will show up in court that way, but when we get to the House floor, when we decide whether to accept or reject Electoral College votes, which is the duty of the United States Congress, not the Supreme Court, or who will be the next president of the United States if no candidate has a majority electoral college, I'm going to vote to be rejecting some of these electoral college submissions by states that have shoddy election systems that don't pretend to be accurate and threaten to undermine our republic. And that's something that I hear from a lot of conservatives. They can accept a Biden victory if that's the case, so long as it was a fair victory. But at right now, they're just not confident enough to know that they have that type of accuracy. Because, I mean, every single day, as you mentioned, there are new instances of votes going the wrong way. And it always seems to be going one way when we're talking about them going the wrong way. So I understand why there's a lot of uh, skepticism regarding our election process right now. But Representative Mo Brooks, it's a real pleasure having you on the program tonight, breaking down what's happening in Congress, but also this upcoming election. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity.